Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shy, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In part three of our Month of Mike special, I'll be going over a Takashi Mike film that you may have not heard about, the 2014 Japanese horror film Over Your Dead Body. The film tells the story of a theater troupe rehearsing a play based on the famous Japanese ghost story Yotsuya Kaidan. The rehearsal becomes increasingly strange and eventually blends into reality. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film as our scare score goes up or down based on how effective the scares are or attempt to be. Over Your Dead Body sees Takashi Miike putting his own spin on Japan's most famous ghost story, but how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore Over Your Dead Body and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with one of my favorite things about watching movies, a sex scene. We meet our main character, Miyuki, who wakes up in bed next to her boyfriend, Kosuke. She is then picked up for work by her assistant, Kayo. On her way to work, she sees a couple arguing in the rain. As the traffic light turns from red to green, we see some sheets of metal as well as a painting on the wall that foreshadows later events. The play rehearsals begin and Kosuke is portraying a ronin named Yemon that the subtitles had me thinking was Lemon for about half the film. Yemon enters a brothel and meets the blind owner named Takuetsu. Yemon says that he is a samurai with no money or rank and feels ashamed of himself. He is approached by a prostitute and steals her comb. Before leaving, he turns around and his appearance changes completely. He now has hair and his kimono changes color. This happens a few times throughout the film and is never explained. I believe it represents the dual personalities that Yemon displays. He is a despicable character but tries to hide this behind a noble samurai persona. He steals a comb from a prostitute at a brothel in one scene and gives the comb to his lover Iwa in the very next scene. Over Your Dead Body has top-notch production design. The play is being shown on a revolving platform that changes with each scene. It can be a little confusing at times because the scenery often blends in with the real world and the line between play and reality becomes blurrier as the film progresses. His lover Iwa is portrayed by Miyuki. He gives her the prostitute's comb as a gift which is an indication of how much he really cares about her. Iwa's father doesn't approve of Yemon and looks like the Japanese version of Red Foreman. He tries to pay Yemon to leave Iwa alone or risk getting a foot shoved up his ass. He calls him a bad person and Yemon confirms this by killing him in cold blood. Iwa is heartbroken by the disappearance of her father and says that Yemon is the only thing that makes her feel better. He takes advantage of the situation and manipulates Iwa into marrying him without her father's approval. Back in the real world, Miyuki is heading to work and sees the couple from the other day. They appear happy this time and the man is pushing a stroller with a baby, but a closer look reveals that there is no baby inside the stroller. This is briefly shown and is meant to foreshadow one of the film's most disturbing scenes. Kosuke drops Miyuki off and tells her not to catch a cold, just like his character Yemon tells Iwa in the play. Yemon and Iwa are now married and have a baby together. Yemon is sporting the look we originally saw him in when he entered the brothel. He shows his true colors and treats Iwa and their child horribly. He gets annoyed by the crying baby and Iwa apologizes to him. He kicks her in the face and accidentally kicks Miyuki in the face for realsies and injures her. This is the first real instance that we see the characters of Yemon and Kosuke becoming one and the same. We see a brief shot of the doll being used as the baby and it's unnerving to look at. They take a break from rehearsing and one of the actresses named Ryo seems to have a thing for Kosuke. Miyuki's friend and assistant Kayo fills in for her as Iwa while she rests from getting blasted in the face. Actor Jun, who portrays Takuetsu, goes to check on Miyuki. Even though he is married, he openly flirts with her and she flatly rejects him. He wishes that the play was his life and Miyuki says that she doesn't. This is ironically what gradually happens as the film goes along. They redo the earlier scene and Kosuke makes sure not to hurt anyone this time. He does, however, flirt with Kayo, which Miyuki sees from offstage. Ryo approaches Kosuke and blatantly flirts with him in front of Miyuki. This theater is like the Hunger Games of flirting. Absolutely no one is safe. Please 
A mysterious woman named Maki approaches Yemon and says that she is the nanny of a girl named Ume, granddaughter of Mr. Ito. She invites him to the Ito mansion to speak with Mr. Ito face to face. We are then introduced to the character of Ume, the granddaughter of Mr. Ito, head of a rich and powerful family. He offers Yemon Ume's hand in marriage and promises him wealth and status. Ume fell in love with Yemon when she saw him in the village. Her parents have passed away and Mr. Ito would do anything for her. Yemon initially declines because of his wife and child, but is easily swayed when a bowl of gold is placed in front of him. Mr. Ito says he's figured out a safe plan to handle Iwa and we see Maki smiling deviously. Her smile is super creepy and her black teeth don't do her any favors. Her black teeth are an old Japanese tradition called Ohaguro. This was mostly practiced by wealthy and married women. Back in the real world, Ryo approaches Miyuki and says that she looks up to her, so much so that she even wants to have the same man. She is clearly not being genuine and Miyuki can see right through her. Kosuke drives home and seems to have a part-time job is an Uber driver taking fellow cast members home. Kosuke is performing a special kind of method acting and cheats on Miyuki with Ryo to really get into the role. Miyuki sneaks into the prop room and grabs Iwa's comb. The baby doll is sitting on the shelf and seems to be watching her. Wow, that baby doll is truly the stuff of nightmares. I did not expect the doll to fully come alive like that. Miyuki tries calling Kosuke, but he ignores her call as he has more important business to attend to. He tries to call her back, but she doesn't pick up. We get another steamy sex scene between Kosuke and Ryo while Miyuki combs her hair in the mirror. This is where the film takes a dramatic shift and begins to descend into the Takashi Miike madness that we've come to expect. Miyuki stares into the mirror and we then see her lying in bed with Kosuke and Ryo. <laughs> Ryo seems to wake up from a nightmare, but blood starts to drip down her forehead. Miyuki exits the bathroom, and a shot of the dark room highlighting the shattered mirror is very eerie. The events that take place in this scene and the rest of the film are never really explained. I believe that the actors are somehow cursed due to performing Yotsuya Kaidan. Their fates are now intertwined with those of their characters, something that Miyuki didn't want to happen. One night, Kosuke stops by, and Miyuki cooks enough pasta to get through an entire dinner service at Olive Garden. She puts on a happy face but clearly knows that he's been putting a lot of extra time rehearsing outside of work. Kosuke sees the broken bathroom mirror and finds a negative pregnancy test in the trash bin. Play rehearsals resume and there is some clear tension between Miyuki and Ryo. Yemon tells Iwa about a possible new position and she makes him a new kimono. The kimono has their family crest, a yin and yang symbol. She states that all things in life have a light and shady side, unknowingly referring to her own husband. She picks up her creepy little baby and says that he He's smiling at his daddy. This gets a deadpan look from Yimon, who doesn't seem to have any affection towards his son. The cast and crew take a day off from rehearsing the play, and Miyuki seems to be losing her mind. Kosuke doesn't come home like he promised, because he is a thespian and rehearses his role even on his day off. We get a cool shot where Miyuki walks out of the living room, and the lights cut off as if she just walked off stage. She walks upstairs and somehow ends up in Ryo's apartment. She hears Ryo trying to talk Kosuke into marrying her and going to work for her father in America. She then turns around to see Miyuki staring at them and gets spooked. He goes to check it out and hears noise coming from the downstairs bathroom. He opens the door and it transitions to him opening the door to Miyuki's apartment bathroom. Miyuki tosses yet another negative pregnancy test in a bin that is now full of them. Play rehearsals resume and Mr. Ito's plan has gone into effect. Iwa is visited by Mika and is given medicine for her recent illness. Poor innocent Iwa is unaware that this is a ploy to steal her husband that he himself as a part of. While Yemon is putting on his noble husband persona, he has his yin and yang kimono on. This represents that he is trying to portray a side of light while his intentions are truly dark. Mika says that their baby boy is very cute, but what she really meant to say was creepy and nightmare inducing just like her. The baby's face is still a doll, but we briefly see its hands turn into real human hands. <laughs> Yemon and Mika walk off stage but continue their performance, showing that the line between the play and the real world has truly become blurred. Mika says that the medicine is not fatal but is meant to disfigure her and make her ugly. 
As Iwa's condition worsens, her baby boy Ichinosuke cries uncontrollably. Because she is breastfeeding, some of the medicine may have gotten into his system. Iwa begins questioning the medicine, but Yemon guilt trips her into continuing to take it. In a truly menacing shot, Yemon sits behind Iwa with his arms crossed, watching her take the medicine he knows is harming her. He is a despicable and truly selfish man. The night Kosuke is supposed to come home, he doesn't show up. Miyuki is sitting alone in the dark and seemingly talking to herself. However, she is talking to the baby that she believes to be inside of her stomach. This would explain why she kept taking pregnancy tests, although they all showed negative results. She goes to the kitchen and grabs a bunch of painkillers. She then proceeds to down them faster than when Patrick took part in the Krabby Patty eating contest. The amount of is being consumed is astounding! <laughs> I first thought she was trying to take her own life, but she does something equally, if not more disturbing. She grabs a bunch of sharp kitchenware and sterilizes them. She then goes into the shower and reminds us all that we are in fact watching a Takashi Miike film. She then proceeds to perform a freaking abortion on herself. My goodness, this scene is super uncomfortable to sit through for obvious reasons. Although disturbing in concept and uncomfortable to sit through, it's not enough to earn traditional scare points. Kosuke arrives in front of the neighborhood and sees Miyuki creepily hiding in the dark. She looks at him emotionless and disappears a lot like this. She reappears in front of the car and breaks through his windshield. The sheets of metal from the beginning of the film start to shake and decapitate him. Unfortunately, this was just a dream. He wakes up terrified and more shocked than I was when my father actually came back. Unfortunately, just like this, that was just a dream. This was pretty much the first traditional scare scene of the film and is pretty effective. He goes into Miyuki's apartment, which is now covered in plastic all over. He calls out to Miyuki but doesn't get a response. He steps on a pinkish bloody puddle and we see that the blood trails all the way up the stairs. In a very haunting image, he finds her lying in bed covered in blood. He tries to get her to a hospital, but she has completely lost her mind as well as a ton of blood. She asks him for sex, which makes him push her away and he falls off the bed. He tries crawling away, but is unable to because he keeps slipping on the blood. In classic Japanese horror fashion, her hair covers her face and she slowly crawls off the bed towards him. <laughs> It's not only scary, but the entire context of the scene is highly disturbing, making for an extremely effective scare. He tells her to stay away from him, but she doesn't listen. He punches her to the ground and chokes her to death. The next morning, Kosuke has cleaned up the apartment and covered up Miyuki's death, which wasn't all that difficult to do considering she already did most of the work for him. He shows up to work and the cast and crew take notice of her unusual absence. This shot of the attendance board is oddly effective, knowing what we know about the situation. Kaio stands in for Miyuki as Iwa, but only for a moment. I absolutely love the dramatic transitions between scenes. It makes the scenes so much more tense. The medicine has taken full effect and Iwa's face is now horribly disfigured. It's super gross as her face is all squelchy and her hair is falling off. Takuetsu arrives at her home sporting a new bald head. He grabs a hold of Iwa and says that he's always desired her. She unsuccessfully tries fighting him off and he reveals that Yemon is the one who said he could have her. He proceeds to sexually assault her with Yemon standing right outside of the house. He enters and stands there as his wife is being assaulted by Takuetsu. This is all a part of his plan and he now condemns the two for having an affair. He murders Takuetsu who was tricked into doing his bidding. <laughs> He also stabs Iwa, saying that she was the married woman who let herself be tricked. Ichinosuke begins to cry and Yemon senselessly kills his own child. Iwa crawls towards her child, trying to save him but dies before she can reach him. This is a horrifically tragic scene that shows just how evil Yemon is. Notice that we never actually see him hold his child until just now.
Now that his plan has succeeded, he mounts Iwa and Takuetsu's body on a wooden board. He picks up the comb he once gave Iwa and tosses it like nothing. The revolving platform changes the setting into Umei's bedroom. Umei gets right into the freaky stuff and starts licking Iman's ears. Iman is shocked to find that Iwa's comb is on top of Umei's hair. He is now being haunted by Iwa's vengeful spirit, who is now turned into an Onryo. As he looks at the comb, Iwa's ghost silently lurks behind him. He unsheathes his katana and goes searching for Iwa. Some of the scenery is now covered in plastic, referencing Miyuki's apartment in the real world. He hears chewing sounds coming from Umei's bed, and we get the film's most disturbingly Mike scene yet. Iwa's curse has caused Umei to go insane, and she is now feasting on a fetus. This caught me completely off guard, but I should have seen it coming being a Takashi Mige film. Iwa then appears before him with the fetus hanging from her mouth, which is an image that is going to be ingrained in my head for a long time. <laughs> He rushes Iwa and strikes her with his katana, but ends up killing Ume instead. Iwa torments him for a brief moment before appearing in front of him offstage. The offstage area is covered in plastic, just like the apartment. The two come face to face, and Yimon says that he is going to send Iwa straight to hell. <laughs> Iwa grabs a hold of her disgusting wound and rips it straight off her face before biting Yimon's neck and decapitating him. A stage technician then rushes in and grabs his head off the floor, which was darkly comical. In a shocking turn of events, the police arrive at the scene of Kosuke's death in front of the apartment. It's revealed that Kosuke's earlier death wasn't a nightmare and actually happened. However, the police are unable to locate his head. Miyuki shows up to work and Kosuke is now the one absent. Knowing she had something to do with his death, she tells the director that the play must go on no matter what. In the film's final scene, Miyuki looks at herself in the mirror. She looks underneath her desk and steps on Kosuke's decapitated head wrapped in the bag as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Over Your Dead Body. My friends, I had no idea what to expect going into this film other than that it was a Takashi Miike film. I had a difficult time getting through this film the first time because I found it to be a little boring and didn't exactly know what I was watching. It took a second viewing for me to really appreciate this film. The film is a unique take on a classic Japanese ghost story and has all the Takashi Miike isms we've come to expect from the director. While not overly scary in the traditional, sense, the film tells a very compelling story that slowly descends into full-on disturbing madness, earning Over Your Dead Body a mild scare score of 44%. The scariest scene in the film is when bloodied Miyuki crawls towards Kosuke. The entire context of the scene is highly disturbing and turned frightening when Miyuki essentially turned into a bloody Onryo. But as always, I hope you all enjoy this video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.